God bless you. This is Bishop Robinson C. Allen. I really thank God for you joining us today as we continue to discuss in prayer, as we wind down this very first month in the year of our Lord 2015. We want to emphasize that prayer is such a powerful, potent weapon. As we engage in our discourse today, as we look at what we have been going through for the past couple of weeks when it comes to prayer, we saw the model of the high priest and the tabernacle. As Paul declared, knowing not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, we saw that model. We looked at the model of the blueprint that was given by Christ for prayer. And we saw where in comparison of these two models, the high priest came to the finale where he came to the end of the tabernacle. In that room, there was no other place to go, but the Ark of the Covenant was before him, the mercy seat and the cherubims that overshadowed the mercy seat. He will sprinkle the blood and then he would have to leave that area because the Shekinah would come and God will accept the sacrifice. When Jesus gave the blueprint in the gospel according to Matthew, there comes a point where you come to the finale where it says, Amen. Amen means in conclusion. Amen means this thing is sealed and settled. There comes a time where our prayer and our supplication and our prayer with fasting, there comes a time where you are released from that mode, where you are released from that season where you come to the Amen. The high priest came to his finale and he had to go back into the holy place, moving from the Holy of Holies into the holy place, then to the outer court. The same thing in prayer in the New Testament. You come to that place where you say Amen. It doesn't mean that you are going to stop praying. It doesn't mean that you're going to stop uh, fasting. It means that there's a season where you have to come out. There's a season where you have to begin to activate because faith without works really brings death. You have to now activate that which you have been praying. You have to now begin to seek. You have to now begin to knock and you have to continue to ask. According to Paul writing to the church at Thessalonica, may not always to pray and not to faint. Pray without ceasing. Now, prayer is one of the most powerful tools that can be accessed and utilized in the life of a believer. True prayer, God's purposes, intent, his will for man are made known. Uh, correspondingly, when prayer is accompanied with fasting, as you would know, most of uh, the Bible believing born again churches are in a period of very intense fasting. And this is the season where we're going to just gradually come out, not stopping, but just gradually come out from the intensity of it. Uh, when prayer is accompanied with fasting, it wields a formidable weapon in the spirit world. And so when you read Ezekiel, you, you see something happening to him in the Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit into a valley. So in the spirit realm, you have valleys, you have mountains, you have things that are dead, you have things that need to come to life. Ezekiel said, I prophesy to the wind. There is prophecy in the spirit realm. There are things that will stir in the spirit realm, flesh, sinews will come. And so that is speaking of what God will do in the realm of the spirit. Now you have the natural realm that you need to really continue to represent Christ. And so this weapon that is formed in the spirit realm renders the attacks of the enemy powerless and impotent. That's why we open this season and that's why we are intensifying and that's why we are just declaring that for this first month, we're going to be talking about prayer, methods of prayer, modus of prayer, how to pray, patterns to pray because men ought always to pray. And so when we do what we do, it renders the attacks of the enemy impotent. So it's not just for January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. This thing is a powerful weapon that covers your generation, your children. It allows the blood of Christ, even from Calvary, going back 17 generations, even before we came from Africa, the blood of Christ was shed. And so that blood covers generation, covers Asia, covers Africa, covers continents, covers kingdoms and powers and principalities. That's why God so highly exalted him. So we are not hooking up with something that is just uh, black letters on white pages. This is power. This is a kingdom move. This is bigger than uh, the kingdom of the UK. It's bigger than Nepal. It's bigger than Saudi Arabia kingdom. This thing is bigger than the kingdom in Barcelona and Spain. This thing is huge. This is the big cheese. This is the king of kings that we are addressing. And so the weapon that we are forming 
constantly attacks the the enemy rendering him powerless and we have to know how to use this weapon how to safeguard the anointing that goes with this weapon there's an anointing that goes with prayer and so when you pray you pray with the power the passion the intensity because you are moving things that are in the realm of the spirit into the natural realm you're moving things constantly the devil will try his best to stop these things daniel told us what happened when you look at the model of paul's life uh festus and uh the kings of his day agrippa and bernice came to hear paul in acts 26 and they said paul we can't help you we will really try to but you appeal to the higher power which was caesar and they said paul off to rome you have to go and so to get to rome to get the appeal they had to send a centurion the centurion represents the power of god over the life of the apostle the ship represents the journey so the church is on a journey then came the storm for 14 days the ship was battered and tossed in the mediterranean according to the external sources of the bible they they, they, they actually left at passover and it is said that in the times of october between september october in passover the seas are just boisterous the waters the flood waters have lifted their voice but the lord and high is mightier than the mighty rushing waves of the deep and so paul was battered in the storm but he said this night the angel stood by me and so prayer gives us potency when Paul was captured, the centurion had jurisdiction over Paul. When Paul got to the ship, the captain had jurisdiction over the centurion and Paul's life. But in the middle of the storm, when there was absolutely nothing that the ship captain could do, ah, the angel stood by Paul and Paul outranked the ship captain. He outranked the centurion because Prayer is one of the weapons that gives us rank in the realm of the spirit. The devil is a liar. And so you have to know that you are seated, according to Paul, right into the church at Ephesus. This thing is just about power and position. This is about how you posture yourself. Don't you dare think that you can pray and believe that God would not hear. He would pray here and he would answer. Your prayer becomes a powerful, potent weapon. And so when we think of the models, there are so many but when we think of these powerful models of prayer we understand that as we advance in our prayer as we begin to craft our prayer as we begin to see the release of God it gives us the encouragement it gives us the inertia to keep praying now prayer is one of the fundamental keys to success in the kingdom once you are talking about kingdom you're going to be under attack once you speak in the message of the kingdom you have to pray and cover what you're doing and prayer becomes one of the keys of successfully living in the kingdom. Now, by it and through it, God gives us the ability to experience divine glory and power that exists in heaven. So Jesus said, when you pray, you have to actually ask the Father to let his will be done in the earth, on the terra firma, as it is in heaven. And so to exist in this world with the problems and the trouble, as you might have seen and heard, the name of our church has been dragged in the mud, this calls for prayer. As you might have known, we are in a, a season where the enemy will do everything possible. And I'll show you why. I'll show you why in a moment. The enemy we know has power, but Jesus disarmed him according to Colossians 2.15. His powers have been disarmed. The proliferation of this kingdom of darkness has been disarmed. And through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, we are able to communicate with God. We are able to ascertain his will. What is your will for 2015? And he's saying to us, you have to hold together and fight this devil. He will try everything possible to silence the power and your destiny. But because our times are in his hands we are pregnant with destiny we are pregnant with purpose we are pregnant in this season with power and momentum and so the will of God is ascertained we fulfill his purpose and mandates so once we are empowered through the spirit we will prevail we will prevail against the enemy and we will have the ability to promote the kingdom of God and so the Apostle Paul understood the power of prayer and its vital importance to daily success and prosperity in all areas of our lives we want to really understand that the Word of God says wish above everything that we prosper being held even as our souls prosper and so it's a vital importance to our daily success 
and it encourages our lives um, to just be saturated in prayer. Saturated in prayer because we know that this is a constant uh, battle. While I'm standing here with you, while I'm standing here speaking, our world is a sphere, it's round. And so the people in New Zealand and the people here in the Caribbean, there are different points of the spectrum. The people in New Zealand are pointed in a different direction, but because of the speed at which our earth is rotating at 25,000 miles an hour, in matters of seconds, we are in a different location when it comes to the heavenlies. And as a matter of fact, when, once we are in a time zone, we have to redeem the time. Now, there are two uh, sought after commodities in our world today, two of the most sought after commodities, money and time. Money can be replaced, but time, you cannot really replace time. We have to redeem the time because we live in an evil day. And so time is of the essence. Time is powerful. And when you read the book of Daniel, you see a lot of things about time, the times and seasons of the people of Israel, the times and seasons of how there are angels that are even chained under the river Euphrates in the fertile crescent that are waiting for a time and a season. When you read the book of Esther, you see when her turn came. When you read uh, in Genesis, when you see the account of Joseph, his time came after 17 years in prison his time came when you see david facing goliath his time came when you see jesus the scripture says in the fullness of time god sent forth his son and so nothing happens before time paul when he was then saul on the damascus road everything happened in the time and at noonday and then he said at midnight i was singing and praying and god shook the prison and so god is a god that is pulling time together this is why he said to the tribe of judah camp alongside the sons of Ishika because the sons of Ishika knew their seasons they knew their time you've got to know your time and the world makes space for individuals who know their time and season and so when you understand the times that you're in when you understand the time the state that we're in Paul um, was looking into the numerical consistency of what we are, have to do. He says, never stop. He's writing to the church at Thessalonica in chapter number five, verse 17. He says, pray without ceasing. And so the numerical power of this thing, we have got to every second, every waking moment, be in prayer for your children, those loved ones who are overseas, your children who are going through exams, going through a difficult time, those who are demon possessed. I want to challenge you. There are so many people that are blinded into religion religiosity that says that you cannot pray for those who are demon possessed so many homes that are on lockdown I decree and declare to you in this season let your prayers ascend to heaven use the name Jesus use the blood when you pray announce according to what happened to Paul in chapter 26 of Acts he appealed to the higher power I decree and declare to you appeal to the higher power there is no name under heaven given whereby men must be saved that name Jesus Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, use the name, appeal to him. Say, Lord, I'm appealing to you. You have the higher power. He's the great physician. When you look at the Adonistic names and the Jehovahistic names, and when you look at the, uh, the Elohim that, that come with the power of God, use the names and appeal to the higher power. We should pray for everything in all situations and life's vicissitudes, especially when you look at Philippians chapter four, verse six. We pray and you have what you call spiritual warfare. To get things from the realm of the spirit, you have to really put up a fight with the kingdom of darkness that will try to hinder you. And so we are able to build uh, power hedges. We are able to build prayer shields, barriers around our lives, especially our family, our marriages, and everything that needs to be protected from destruction, destruction and forces of the enemy. And so prayer puts a shield one prayer opens portals prayer opens doors and so it builds your faith so doubts will be disp dispersed fears will be diminished and you will begin to build your most holy faith prayer gives you the energy and so when it comes to our family when it comes to marriage when it comes to the barriers that the enemy will bring against these areas and the, the things that will be built up prayer breaks them down Prayer gives you the edge. And so we need to have the kind of protection from destructive forces of the enemy. 
Yes, we do not have to retreat in fear in this season. Let nothing, let nothing shift you. Let nothing shake you. I want to thank God even now for those who have been praying for us, those who have been supporting the ministry in these most trying and difficult times, those who have been interceding, those who have been saying, Pastor, we are with you. And so we thank God that we are not retreating. We are moving forward. The devil is a liar. And so we are advancing in, in this, this powerful season. We are not going to retreat in fear. We have been given authority to uh, charge ahead in faith. Our commander in chief says, you are more than a conqueror. So just rise up and begin to act like it. Pray until you can pray. Act until you can have the position. If you're an OJT, you just OJT until you get the thing right. Don't you dare give up. And so prayer builds these powerful hedges. Prayer gives us the faith that says don't retreat. Storm the gates of hell. Uh, violently plunder the kingdom of darkness. You have been given the authority. While establishing the kingdom of God in territories. And so you you, you hither to occupy what the enemy has been occupying for a long time. You take up residence. And so the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And we understand that the gates of hell shall not prevail according to Matthew 16, 18. These gates shall not prevail. And so it's not that the gates are designed to keep us in and to keep us afraid. The gates are designed to push against. And so we are pushing in the season against gates Barriers, barricades, glass ceilings, barriers. I never forget Chuck Yeager, the man who broke the sound barrier in the Bell X airplane as he's accelerating in the atmosphere at speeds unknown to man at that time. He's about to hit the first sonic barrier, but in that cockpit, the aircraft is vibrating as if it's going to break apart. Mashing all the instruments into unbelievable speeds and altitudes. But he pushed the throttle and the moment he hit the first sonic boom, pow! 1 verse 13, he says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. That word power of darkness means he could have said he has delivered us from darkness. No, the word deliverance and the word power and the word darkness tells us that this was not an ordinary, just casual job. This was a powerful thing that happened on Calvary. Calvary, the blood, ah, the stripes. Isaiah saw this thing. He said, this, this thing is beyond comprehension, a root out of a dry ground. He said, when we look at him, we, there's no form, no comeliness that we should desire him. Man of sorrow, man acquainted with grief he said ah we hid our faces from him then he said who is going to believe this report who can the arm of the lord be revealed uh, he is like a tender plant a root of, of a dry ground then as i said hey who is this that is coming from edom with dyed garments from bosra traveling in the greatness of his strength and the traveler responded by saying i have pressed the wine press alone there's no body with me my garments are stained this thing is violent this thing is powerful and then here comes the 21st century we cannot engage this in me as if we are talking to some friend on the telephone we have to be very passionate we have to be very engaging and so Colossians says he has delivered us from the power this thing had power to disfigure this thing has power to cause hemorrhoids this thing has power to cause cancer this thing has power to cause deafness this kingdom has power to cause blindness this kingdom has power to bring death this kingdom has power to stigmatize this kingdom has power to cause you to feel as if you need to just give up this kingdom have power to bring all kinds of accusation. This kingdom has power to lift up and destroy that which God has built. And so he has delivered us from this and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And so Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. That is powerful. That is the most powerful, potent portion of where we are. He has come that we might have life. And so we have been delivered. Christ came to earth to make dead men live again. I was one dead, but I'm alive. And because I'm alive, I want to turn the light of heaven on. I want you to see the light. I want you to experience the light and I want to experience the life. And so the, the real kingdom that perpetrates darkness, yes, it exists. 
It exists right here in our zone. Revelations 11, 15 says, And the seventh angel, angel number seven, sounded. And there was a great voice from heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And so the kingdoms of this world are, are fully formed and ready. Um, just last week, we heard where a scientist from Australia and a scientist from the United States came together and they discovered this powerful way of going into a boiled egg and just breaking down the chemical structure and unboiling that egg, bringing it back into its normal state. And so the envelopes have been pushed. The, the next level of cell phones is a contact lens. You just put that lens in your eyes and you think I'm talking to you. I'm reading my email and making a phone call by the speed of talk. Our world has changed. Our seasons and times in this present age have changed. And so these kingdoms are fully formed and ripe and they're about to come together. Uh, when you look at Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook, this young man, he has all the accounts in a four story building with all the algorithms. And if you you think that he's just a young man who's just a multi-millionaire all the marketplaces are coming to him why are they coming to him because you have preferences you want to shop and so they want to know what your preferences are and so they go to him and they say hey if I'm Nike I say I'm gonna pay you just to find out if someone wants my sneaker I, I this thing is powerful and so if Facebook was a, a, a nation it would be the third largest nation with billions of people logged on from different languages, the cosmopolitan, the cosmological, and when the angel sounded, he said, hey, all this traffic, all this market, all these people, the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. This is why we represent the kingdom. This is why we speak of the kingdom. This is why we stay on the kingdom message. This is why we focus on the kingdom, because in the end, the outcome is we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. The outcome is we win once we stick with this kingdom. And so many are given up, many are falling away, many are saying the church doesn't appeal to me. They don't even know what they're doing. The earnest expectation, said Paul, right in the church at Romans, he said the earnest expectation of the creature is waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, right now our ministry is facing a very hard time. And so we have to know that if we're with the kingdom, the kingdom will take care of us in England in the UK people have to pay their taxes to take care of the Queen but here in this kingdom of power this kingdom of might the King takes care of us and so we have to just keep our focus on keep doing what we are doing keep the name of Jesus lifted high regardless of hell come high water the devil can huff he can puff but he cannot blow this candle out because this candle cannot be diminished this candle has not been lit by man this is God's doing this is the finger of God and it will prevail when we look at Haggai chapter 2 verse 22 listen to what Haggai says I will overthrow the thrones and kingdoms and I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the heathen and I will overthrow chariots and those that ride in them and horses and they that ride yes they shall come down everyone by the sword of his brother and so let me tell you this there is warfare overhead in a powerful way there is warfare in the heavenlies as never before. The outcome of the warfare is when we see murder, when we see death, when we see all young people on drugs, when we see violence, when we see sex uh, uh, being marketed and been just thrown about as never before. That is the very uh, reflection of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. And so if my people, according to the book, of Chronicles, if my people are called by my name, if we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we turn from our wicked ways, if we seek the face of God, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will hear. I will heal the land. And so that's the reason why we are praying, because the land needs healing. And this nation will never, ever go down the tube because we are here. We have been placed here. We could have been having this conversation in Grenada. This conversation could have been going on in the UK. But we are having this conversation. God has given us the anointing and the purpose. Our times are in his hands. So it means, therefore, that if our times are in his hand, we are right on time. The answers will be right on time. What we are facing came right on time. God is speaking. He's speaking volumes. He's saying, church, arise, rise up, begin to fight this battle. This is no ordinary battle. 
And once the battle intensifies, it means that the enemy knows his time is short. And so when you look at what Haggai is saying, and when you compare what Revelations 11.5 is saying, and Haggai chapter 2.22 is saying, we, we are in a battle where kingdoms, chariots, horses are going to be overthrown. This is a serious type of battle. And so in this season, God could be your Jehovah Jireh, but he could be Lord Sabahoth at the same time. He could be fighting battles and providing. And he, he could be Rafa, he could be Rohi, he could be Sikindu in China, he could be Rafa, and it all depends on your prayer. If someone in China is praying for Rohi, the shepherd, he will be there. If someone in the United States, North America is praying for Jehovah Jireh, he shows up through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are praying for Jehovah Sabahot to fight in battles. He said, you just look at Haggai. Look at the outcome of what prayer can do. I will overthrow these things, kingdoms. I'll destroy the strength of kingdoms, of the heathen. I will overthrow their chariots. And you will often wonder, why does the heathen rage? He designs these things for his glory. He will bring Babylon into Judah and he takes Judah to Babylon and when he's ready, he sends Assyria and when he's good and ready, he sends the Medes and Persians to destroy Babylon. And when he's good and ready, he sends Alexander the Greek great to destroy them all. And when he's good and ready, he sends the Romans. And when he's good and ready, the Romans just disappear. And here we have the 21st century. When God moves in paradigms and dimensions, we are just amazed at what he's able to do. And he's a dimensional God. And so if we need to fix our nation, if we need to really take care of what is about to happen, we have to go into the future and begin to touch our young people, our youths from kindergarten. And then we have to begin to pray that the future begins to take on a new connotation, a shape. And when we see the outcome from Revelation chapter number 11, verse 15, we realize that this thing is powerful and the kingdoms of this world will be transferred. The wealth will be transferred in the four most powerful areas of the system, whether it be sports, tourism, fashion, cosmetics, uh, whether it be literature, transportation, mining, government, politics. You, you have, let's just pick sports. You have one player, just pick one team, one player. One player walks away with 3 million TTs every week for just kicking a football. And so these systems are loaded. They are iniquitous, they sell violence, they sell all kinds of devices to destroy your family, to destroy your children. These systems are loaded from coast to coast with lots of wealth. And so when we preach this, we are not preaching it to get the wealth here to say, well, hey, I'm rich. We are preaching it because our real pay is out of this world. God has provided for us. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I would have told you. And so my account is already built in heaven. My purpose and my destiny and what I am doing at this point is releasing the kingdom value so that those who need to hear this, those who are on the edge, undecided, you will finally begin to get the inertia to really begin to press in and discover that God is able to cover you. He's able to cover your family. He's able to save. He's able to keep. He's able to satisfy. He sent his son. Isaiah said unto us, a child is born, a son is given. And so the manger, Bethlehem and Calvary comes together in that one statement. And he so loved, John 3, 16, he so loved the system. He's going to capsize the system, but he so loves it that he sent his only begotten son, that whomsoever believes shall not perish. So he sowed Christ into the system. Jesus is the seed. God is the farmer. The soil becomes the earth. And then the, the very microcosm of the macrocosm, our hearts become the soil. And so the word, the seed must enter the heart. It must enter the soil of the heart. The conditions obviously must be right. And so when we preach this gospel, we preach in such a dimension where we cause you to create that conditions by saying, Lord, with the heart confession is made, with the mouth confession is made, with the heart you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And so the power of this gospel, once we package it right, once the fivefold tacticians packages this thing right, we are able to give the, the most clarity and the most clarion call to those of you who want to come closer to Christ. And so when we look at the purpose of the church according to Ephesians 3.10, it's to the intent that now unto principalities and powers might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. In this season, God is releasing powerful wisdom to his servants 
I really declare and decree that the church is coming to a place of maturity. The church is coming to full man. This is Bishop Robinson Seattle declaring and decreeing over your life that in this season, don't you stop praying. 